Hello and welcome back. Now that we have created our first Databricks workspace, today we are quickly going to run through that particular workspace. We are going to create our first notebook today and we are going to understand some features about it. We are also going to create our first compute using single node cluster. Now, if you have not seen our previous videos, I would recommend you to go back and watch them first. So, without any delay, let's begin. In our previous video, we created our first workspace with Azure Databricks. Now, I am inside that particular workspace. So, on my left hand side, if you see, we have a lot of options available when we log in into our Databricks workspace. Now, all of these options would be enabled or disabled as per the privileges of the user. Right now, I am logged in with the workspace admin privilege. And this is why I have access to all of the personas that Databricks offer. So if you see on the left hand side, I have access to the SQL, the data engineering and all to the machine learning stuff. And this can very well be controlled by the workspace admin. So consider a user, if they only have a persona for data analyst or say business analyst, the workspace admin can very well disable certain options, for example, machine learning or data engineering for them so that they can only work on the stuff that is related to data analyst or business analyst. Now, today we are not going to discuss about all these privileges and entitlements for the users. Today we are going to concentrate about this top part of the workspace. Okay. So, first tab that you see here is the workspace. And this is exactly where you store all your artifacts for your Databricks workspace. So, Databricks maintains this in form of folders. So, if you expand the workspace and if you expand the users, all the users who have access to this particular workspace, Databricks workspace, will have their own folders created. And you can create all your artifacts and store in your respective folder. So if you click on home, this is the folder that has been created for you. Now, if you click on the right hand top create drop down button, you can see a lot of things that you can create. You can create query, alert, dashboard, notebook, MLflow experiment, or a simple file. Now, we are going to look in all of them one by one, but not today. Today, we are going to concentrate our efforts on the most important, which is the notebook. So before I do that, let me just go ahead and create a folder first. So I'll click on folder and I'll create a folder called notebooks. So I'll click enter. This will create a folder inside my directory. So if you see, this is my directory and inside this, a notebook folder has been created. So I'll expand this and under this folder, now I'm going to create a notebook. So I'll click on notebook. Now, if you see, Databricks has created a default notebook for us. You have a default title at the top. You can just go ahead and change it. So I'll change it to and rename to my first notebook. So this is my first notebook. Now, we are going to check some features about notebook today. The first important point is language. Now, if you see by default, it is Python. But if I click on this drop down, you can see a lot of options. Python, SQL, Scala, and R. And all of these options are supported in notebook. Now, in a single notebook, you can also use multiple languages. For example, you can use Python and SQL in a single notebook. And we are going to see that in some bit. Before that, let me just go ahead and close this pop-up for free trial. Okay. Now, in order to run a notebook, you need a compute. Now, if I click on this, you can see I don't have any compute created. And we are going to create our first compute in a few minutes. So let me just close this first. And on the left hand side, you can see a lot of options. If I click on the first option, this is the table of content. It means it is the content of your notebook. The second one is the workspace where I created my notebook, right? So I created my notebook into the notebooks folder and this is what it is showing me. The third one is the catalog. Since our Unity catalog is not enabled yet, so you don't see the Unity catalog, but you see the default catalog, which is the Hive Meta Store. And the fourth one is for the assistant. So Databricks by default provide you a Databricks assistant, which will help you to debug or generate code if it is required. We are not going to use assistant today, so I'll just close it off. Now on the right hand side, you see a lot of other options. We are going to check all of them once we create our compute, okay? Now, before that, if you hover over a cell, you see something called code and text. Now, code is something that you write in order to make your job work, right? So if you want to write a code, you can write in the code cell. But what is this text cell? If I click on this text, you can see this is a markdown cell. Markdown cell means you can write some default text in order to put headings or some content. For example, I want to put the heading for my notebook. So I'll put it here in a single hash. I'll write my first notebook. Okay, and I'll just run with shift and enter. In order to run a particular cell, you can click shift and enter. Okay, so as soon as I do that, so this is a markdown cell. So whenever this notebook will get executed, this cells will just be there for representation of title or text. These are not code cells. Okay, code cells are something which will get executed whenever you execute your notebook. Okay, so that is the difference between a code and a text cell. Okay, now we have two code cells here. Now, in order to run a code, we first need to create a compute and we need to connect it from here. Okay, so what we need to do is we'll go to the compute terminal. Now, right now we don't have any compute and there are a lot of options on the top. So you don't need to get overwhelmed now. 
Just wait, we are going to look into each of the compute later. Today we are just going to create a single node cluster in order to just have a look and feel of the notebooks, okay? So to do that, I'll just click on create compute. And now you can see a lot of options here. You don't need to worry about all of them. Just follow along today. We are going to see all of them in our later video. For now, just click on single node and let it be single user. Now we are going to use something which is called Databricks runtime version. We will let it be whatever it is. And we don't need photon acceleration for now. So we'll just disable this checkbox and we need to change the node type. So we are going to use something which is called general purpose compute. So we are going to use standard VS3 V2. Okay, so I'm just selecting this. Now, if you are thinking, why did we select this? Don't worry about it. We'll discuss all of them. Now, the most important is terminate after. Remember, whenever you create a compute, you always use this terminate after. The reason is, once your compute is ideal, it will automatically terminate your compute after some time. But if you don't use this, your compute will keep on running and Azure will keep on charging you for this compute. Okay, so let's reduce it to 10 minutes. We don't need 120 minutes. I'll reduce it to 10 minutes. So if my compute is ideal for 10 minutes means nothing is executed on this particular cluster for 10 minutes it will get terminated automatically thus saving us cost from azure billing okay so azure will not charge once this cluster is terminated so we'll keep the terminated as 10 minutes okay there are other options as well but i'll let it be whatever it is okay i'll just go ahead and click on create compute now this compute will take some time in order to run what we need to do is meanwhile we'll go back to our workspace to our notebooks to my first notebook and just click on this connect and use this cluster so i'll click on this so meanwhile it is starting because the compute is not running so it is showing you starting once this is started it will show you a green dot so i'll come back once this compute is up and running awesome my compute is up and running now if you see on the top you can see a green dot here it means my compute is running now okay now in order to check if it is working or not you can just go ahead and type spark in the code cell okay and let's run this and you can see an output here okay so by default you have your spark session created in a databricks notebook okay so that can be accessed using spark okay now since we have our spark session ready so we can just go ahead and create our first data frame so in order to do that what i'll do is i'll just write spark dot i'll use a command called range okay in order to create some numbers so i'll use from zero to ten so what this range would do is it will create a data frame of numbers from zero till nine okay and I'll just use show command in order to trigger an action. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and run this. Now, if you see, it is running a Spark job and you can see an output here. Okay. It created a data frame with a default column called ID, the numbers from zero till me. Okay. So our code is running well in notebook. Okay. What if we want to run a SQL code? So I told you, you can run multiple language using the same notebook. So to run a different language in a different notebook, you can use something called magic commands. And in order to run a magic command, you can use percentage and you can put the language, which is SQL. Okay. You can use percentage SQL in order to run SQL command. If you see on the left hand side, we have our Hive catalog, right? Let's go ahead and see what all databases are there in Hive catalog. So to do that, I'll just write so databases. Now this is a SQL query. So I'll just run this. Awesome. Now if you see, it gave me an output called default. So there's only one database within Hive Meta. So, so if I expand this, you can see there is one default schema or database inside the Hive Metastore. Okay. Now, one thing to notice is Databricks by default identifies what type of cell it is. Okay. Since we used a magic command called percentage SQL, gives a command type of SQL. Similarly, if you scroll up, it uses Python for the data frame code that we run. Okay. So now you understand in the same notebook, we can run multiple type of languages using magic functions. Now you can even run Unix function. For example, if you want to run a Unix function, so you can use percentage sh. And you can run a Unix command. For example, you can run ls minus ltr in order to see the present working directory. So you can see this shows me my first notebook inside my present working directory. Okay. So this is how you can use multiple languages within the same notebook. Okay. Now on the right hand side, we talked about a lot of options. So let me just scroll up and let me show you the first option. So the first option is the comments. It means you can put comment in a notebook. Now, Notebooks can be used for collaboration. It means multiple people can use the same notebook at a single time. Okay. For example, if I'm using this notebook, another person having access to this notebook can work on it. And you can leave comments in order to make sure that people understand what is happening. So consider I want to put a comment here. So I'll just select this and I'll click on this and I'll put action. Okay. So this is an action. So I just put a comment. It means whenever someone sees this notebook, runs on the comment, they will see my comment here. Okay, so multiple people can work on the same notebook simultaneously. And that is where the collaboration comes into picture. So Databricks notebooks allows you to collaborate.
So coming to the next tab, which is ML flow experiment, we're going to see this later. The third one is the version history. So if I click on this, you can see Databricks maintains all the version history. For example, if you want to go to a different previous version, you can just select that and you can select on restore this version. So it will come back to the previous version. Now, this is the default latest version. So this is what it is showing you now. Okay. So you can maintain your version history as well here in the same notebook. The fourth tab is the variable explorer. Now, since this is a Python notebook, you can use this to see different variables which are present. So if you can see, it has already stored a data frame in a variable called SQL DF. Now, if I scroll down, this was the data frame that we ran, right? So it stored it in a SQL wave. Let's create one more variable in Python just to see this. So what I'll do is I'll type A equals to 10. Okay, so let me run this. So this is a Python cell. So you, you can see now it added one more variable called A10. The last one is the library. Now we are going to see libraries later when we work majorly with compute. For now, you can ignore this. Now we have seen a lot of basics about notebooks today. Now the most important part is notebooks allows collaboration. So multiple people with access to that notebook can work simultaneously on that notebook. Okay, so that's the best part. And a notebook can be used by all of the personas, whether it is data engineering, data analyst or business analyst or data scientist. Okay, even the business users can use notebook in order to run some commands or SQL commands or they can also use it for visualization. So we are going to see that later and you can even share notebook with appropriate privileges between different users. Now that we have understood about notebook, let's go ahead and terminate our cluster first. So to do that, I'll just go back to compute. I'll click on ease with data's cluster and I'll click on terminate and I'll click on confirm. As soon as I do that, you can see this red running. It means it is terminating, okay? It will get terminated within a minute. Now you can see it is grayed out. It means it is terminated, okay? And in backend, whatever VM was requested for this cluster to run will be released within a few minutes. And you will be saved with charge once this is terminated. So it is very important that once your work is done, you terminate the cluster in order to save yourself from billing. Now, in our next video, we are going to enable Unity Catalog for our workspace. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.